So I figured I'd start this video off uh, showing you a little bit about what I'm going to do with the motor. So we come over here to the motor and I still have not ordered the parts yet. I do have a list of all the parts that we're going to need. So basically we're going to need uh, rings, main bearings, rod bearings, optional, head gasket, rear round gasket, the front, the side, and the oil sump gasket, <clears throat> two output seals, three spark plugs, the small boot, and the large boot. All that's probably going to total up to be close to $500. Now, because it's got such few hours on it, I really thought about running the same rings again. Um, I'll make that determination when I check the ring gap here in a little bit. Um, but I do know that I need a new set of main bearings. You can see that really, that gnarly scratch right in there. You can feel that with your fingernail. It's just, to me, it's just too far beyond what what needs to be in a rotating assembly. If you come up here to the top one on the same journal, it just carried it on. Now, what happens is uh, to cause something like that with such a uh, few hours on an engine, you have your oil galleys and... I'll show you. So during the casting process, there was probably a tiny little shard of metal up inside of that hole. And when it first got fired up, it sent that tiny little piece of metal and it embedded it into the bearing itself. And then it just sat there and spun. And there's just nothing you can do. You know, no one would really know. And the scarring that happened, it really just, it wasn't detrimental to the engine. So... <clears throat> the engine itself sat unused for roughly four years, three or four years. So in doing so, the valve stayed open on this cylinder and this cylinder. Now, if we look down inside, if this will give us a good view, you can kind of see midway down where the ring set. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this hone and I'm going to go ahead and clean each one of these cylinders up. And then I'm going to check the ring gap. See how that one is too? Now it looks worse on film. You can't even feel that with your hand. But to me it's just something that needs to be addressed. So I went ahead and went to Napa. And I bought these stones here which are extremely fine. I think they're 600 grit. So I'm going to go ahead and use those and clean the cylinder walls up. Now, I would noticed something from back when I'd raced go-karts. I'd bought this for building Predator engines, and it's a point, uh, it's a 2.8 to 2.9, and it's for putting your pistons in and getting your ring seated. And look at that, it just fits absolutely perfect. So I don't even have to worry about, uh, you know, a ring expansion tool, I already got one, and it's like, the legit one so i'm excited about that and come to the pistons i'm going to take these picks and i'm going to go inside and clean the the insides of the top and the middle uh, gaps for the rings i just want to find any carbon in there and and flake it out i did let these pistons soak in pedestal cleaner and uh, kind of cleaned them up with a little coarse plastic brush around the rim just trying to clean some of the stuff off of it, but I'm not going to replace the pistons or, or any of that. I am going to uh, check the weight to make sure they all weigh the same. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so all we gotta do is continue the process with the rest of the three. So finally all finished with weighing everything. So we have uh, 196.4, 196.8, and 196.8. So the number two and the number three pistons are slightly heavier than the number one. The pin is pretty even across the board, uh, 45.2, 0.1, and 0.1. 
Now you come to the rod, we have a 34.81, a 34.64, and a 34.80. So number two rod is a little bit lighter than number one and number three. So I'm not sure if I'll adjust any of that. Essentially, in order to, to balance that, you would have to shave a little bit of weight off of the number one and shave a little bit of weight off the number three in order to get them to weigh 346.4 which I doubt I'll do that but at least we know how close they are now I'm going to go ahead and start the cylinder honing uh, just using a regular old uh, drill and honing tool and some 10w30 Let's see what she looks like. I'm going to go ahead and take a paper towel. Clean the wall out of the first cylinder here. I'm going to take a light and look down inside. And try to look in here. You can still kind of see the imperfection in the sidewall. So it didn't really touch it much. Being that the stone is 600 grit. I'd assume that it probably isn't very aggressive or abusive to it all. I counted each one. I did uh, 21 strokes. I wanted to keep all of them evenly. And if the camera could actually focus, you can still see some cross hatches in there, which is actually pretty good. But I haven't wiped that down. That's still got the oil dripping right there in the top. Come over here. You can see the cross hatches there. So it's actually doing the job nicely. <clears throat> I'll have to go in there with my hand and feel around and see if uh, see if I feel any blemishes. And if I don't feel any blemishes, then I think we'll, we'll be good to go. I might hit it one more time, and then I'll clean it up, and I'll check the ring gap. So now that I've hit it a second time with the hone, I'm going to go ahead and use some brake clean and try to spray out all of the... Uh, the cuttings. One thing's for sure, you really got to make sure you get it all out. Looks pretty good. Let's take a peek under some light. It looks really good. If you get down in there, you can kind of see where the rings used to sit, but it's only a blemish, like visually. There's nothing that you can feel with your fingernail or anything. There's a little bit of discoloration that's just from the uh, brake cleaner. I haven't wiped that cylinder down yet. Same for this one. But you can see that ring in the side where the, I guess that would be like where your, your main compression ring and then where your secondary ring set. And then on one of them, I believe it's this one, if the camera could focus, <clears throat> which it won't, you could actually see where the oil ring was. So that's just a testament to how long the pistons stayed stationary in one spot. 
<clears throat> so it's kind of leaning more towards I feel like the smartest decision would be to go ahead and replace the rings. Even though it doesn't have many hours on it, I might as well just go ahead and bite the bullet and pay and get a new set of rings. And then it'll pretty much be a fresh engine. If I slap new main bearings in it and I slap fresh rings in it and I'll leave the rod bearings because if you look at the rod bearings, the rod bearings are still pretty good. There is a little bit there, but that's just wearing off your break-in material. None of these look anywhere close to what this ugly sucker look like. But we'll go ahead and we'll replace the mains and uh, slap it back together. So I went ahead and put all the upper rings in and I used the piston, pushed them down about three quarters of an inch this number one here measures about 15 this one here let me see if i can show we have 13 on it and let's see if we can get it it goes right in now if i do the 14 it won't fit it barely drags there so and we come to this one and i believe this one, it it drags the 13, so I'm going to call this one 12, but you can get it to fit, but I'm going to say that's more like 12,000. I'm going to have to check and see what the service manual says that they're supposed to be. So part two to this video, I uh, wanted to go ahead and show you a little bit uh, about what came in the mail, and... Um, I have not received the crank back yet, so I'm not going to continue to do any more uh, work on the rods or the pistons or any of that until I receive the crank. That way we can go ahead and check the clearance on the rods and the main journal. We're not going to jump into that. Now I'm going to go ahead and unbox and show you everything that I've received. So this box down here, if you look, uh, $259. It's a complete gasket kit. And I, it was basically easier for me to order the whole kit than it was to go and piecemeal it out. So I went ahead and paid a little bit more by getting the whole kit. But I wasn't too sure about the head gasket being that it wasn't OEM. So that came from eBay. This right here came from, it says, Internet Department. And it was basically, what was it? It was c Parts Warehouse Direct. So it was all... It was all BRP products, so that's good that all these are OEM. Now, this box over here actually came from Partzilla. I had failed and forgot to order, um, I believe, rod bearings. So I went ahead and ordered rod bearings, and since the head gasket was only 30 bucks, I went ahead and bought a brand new OEM head gasket that came in this uh, packaging. Now look at this. I'm very, very displeased with it. That is exactly how they shipped me. The head gasket from Partzilla. Now let's take it out and let's inspect it. Let's go ahead and sh throw it down here. This side looks good. Alright, now we flip it over to this side and look. Look at how bent that is right there. That is just absolutely horrible. If we get it up here and put some angles on it. Look how bent and dented up it is. There is no way that that would seal. So it's bent all real bad right here. Now I did email Partzilla back and they told me to return this and they would ship me a new one. Now for a $30 part, it is more time than it's worth for me to send this thing back rather than it is just to order a brand new one. So. I'm either going to use the head gasket that's in that box, or I'm going to buy another one. I don't even think it's worth sending back. Never going to buy from that company ever again. So let's take a peek. Here we have all of our large bolts. So I believe these are going to be uh, your main, uh, basically your, like your head studs and your base studs. So they will be the bolts that go into these channels here. So now that I've got it all sprawled out, you can kind of see what I got. So here are those main studs. I went ahead and got 16 of them. 
and because they are torqued to yield the old ones are basically just throw away so we're gonna do this we might as well do it right um, we got all of our main uh, rod bearings here and then these are I believe your journal bearings so you have your base journals and then the upper portion which I don't think have the groove in them and then I got a new outer boot and then the new drive shaft boot with the clamps and I went ahead and got brand new sets of rings because if we're going to redo the, the engine I mean for what I've spent on all this is probably a thousand dollars between this stuff a messed up head gasket and a whole kit now you can actually go on the website and just piece it out and do it for about half the price now I got a lot of extra gaskets like these for the valve cover and I didn't know it came with these, but it did. And then if we come over here, I actually ordered the same ones from BRP. So I'm probably gonna use the BRP ones just because I believe this is probably just some cheaper aftermarket one, but it probably would work. I just don't wanna use it. So some of the parts I'll use, some of the parts I won't, but basically I needed, uh, you know, these here, this one here. Um, I needed the head gasket. And then uh, this round donut one here for the end of the block. So, and then we got our kit there from the dealer. So, I've got enough stuff to do it. I'm just basically waiting for the crankshaft from the machinist. So, I'd send him a message, try to, you know, squeaky wheel gets to grease, but it is what it is. I'm kind of stuck at this point. And um, that's it. So, that's going to be it for this video. I look forward to finishing the other video. Um, you know assembling it but i'm gonna throw this in with the edit uh from me actually you know disassembling cleaning things up weighing stuff so it's going to be mixed together but the video has been shot over about a period of two weeks so once everything gets ready to go then uh have a good video of uh, assembling it for you and it'll it'll teach me a little bit about it and i'm excited to get it running i haven't been on a jet ski in probably five years so it'll be a, a bit of a really really good time and i like building motors i got plenty of them sitting there on the rack so if you're watching the jet ski video i do have a race car we race uh, with champ car and i'm actually fixing to go to uh south carolina at the end of april and we're gonna race um what cmp so that's where we're headed so here's the ski got it all cleaned up happy looks good probably gonna use the same output shaft because it's not really messed up at all so i don't want to keep spending money on this more and more and more and more and it's taking off the value when it goes from time for me to sell it so six hundred dollars ski thousand dollars in parts my labor i'm in at sixteen hundred bucks now i have to pay the machinist for the crank which he already saw that another shop charges 400 bucks to do it so i'm sure i'm going to end up paying him that much whether he asked me for 200 or 300 whatever i feel like if he's going to do it for me, it's literally five minutes from my house. And he says he likes one-off projects. So if he does a good job on it, I'm going to ask him to put his information on these videos to where y'all will have someone on the East Coast to send the crankshafts to if you want to get this done yourself. So thank y'all for watching this video. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Shoot some comments. I'm always live on the other end, so I answer everybody's questions. Um, you know, good, positive comments are a little uplifting, a little boosting. So make me uh you know incentivize me to make more videos so thank y'all for watching hit that subscribe button give it a thumbs up see y'all bye